Hello, welcome back to Chemistry It Is All That Matters and actually it is finally chemistry. I added the R. I apologize for those first three chapters. But now we're back to chemistry, it is all that matters, and today we're going to be talking about the Bohr atom. So let's take a look at this model of the atom created by Bohr. So Bohr's atom is a nice tool to use to understand how the um, atom is arranged with protons, neutrons, and electrons. It is an oversimplification of the atom, but it does help us to model how um, the electrons, protons, and neutrons are arranged, and it also helps a little bit in understanding how some of the bonding practices take place with the atom. Now the Bohr atom is only functional really with the first 18 to 20 elements. After that it starts getting a little complex as you get into the elements in the transition and inner transition metals. So we are going to primarily use the Bohr atom only with the first 18 to 20 elements. And uh, again, this is an oversimplification of that idea of the atom. So when we look at the atom, we're going to begin with the nucleus being the center of the atom. And the center of the atom is highly dense with protons and neutrons. And since protons and neutrons make the majority of the mass of the atom, this is where the mass of the atom is centralized in the nucleus. Now, in Bohr's model, we have basically orbits similar to the orbits of the planets around the sun that house the electrons and remember the electrons are moving so rapidly and they are so small in comparison to the protons and neutrons they have very little effect on the mass of the atom. Now that first orbital of the atom based on Bohr's model is a very small sphere that surrounds the nucleus and it houses only two electrons and that's because this first orbit represents the first two elements of the periodic table hydrogen and helium therefore we only need to deal with two electrons in that first orbit however when we go to the second orbit we can house up to eight electrons and this would represent the elements in the second period of the periodic table and in the second period or row of the periodic table we have eight elements so therefore that second orbit of Bohr's atom will house eight electrons and the third orbit likewise will house eight electrons because that third row of the periodic table also houses eight elements so it Bohr's model very closely resembles the elemental structures found in the periodic table. So here's an example of one of Bohr's atoms, and this is the model for aluminum. And with aluminum, we look at the atomic number, which is, of course, 13, and that makes 13 protons in the nucleus. The AMU, or the atomic mass unit, the mass from the periodic table, uh, it comes out to be a whole number at 27, so therefore we need 14 neutrons. Remember, AMU minus the atomic number, or mass minus the proton value will give you the number of neutrons. And then the electrons, we would have a neutral atom, therefore electrons and protons are equal, and we need to house 13 electrons. So the first orbit will house 2, the second orbit will house 8, that gives us 10, and that would put 3 electrons in the outer shell. And this is basically how we arrange Bohr's atom. So let's go ahead and start building some atoms of our own using Bohr's model. So let's take a look at hydrogen, and when we look at the periodic table we get this information. Atomic number 1, that would mean 1 proton in the nucleus. Mass number of 1, that means mass minus proton value gives you 0 neutrons. So we do not have to add any neutrons to the nucleus. And we would want in hydrogen at this time to be a neutral atom, so therefore the negative and positive charges have to be equal. So we need 1 electron in that outer orbit. So here is a very simplified model of a hydrogen atom. So let's build a helium atom. Atomic numbers 2 tells us that it has two protons, so we're going to put two protons in the nucleus. And then the mass is 4, 
So 4 minus 2 gives us 2 neutrons. So we're going to have to add 2 neutrons to the nucleus. And remember, this nucleus is very densely packed. So there is our neutrons and protons of the nucleus. And again, making it a neutral atom, we are going to have 2 electrons in that first orbit. So there we have a model of helium. Let's go to the next level of the periodic table and let's look at lithium. Lithium, of course, is atomic number three. So we're now dealing with one, two, three protons. The mass is seven. So seven minus three gives us four neutrons. And again, the nucleus is very densely packed with protons and neutrons, making up the mass of that atom. And then we need three electrons to make it a neutral atom because you need to balance the negative electrons with the positive protons. The first orbit can only house two of those electrons, so the third electron then ends up in the second orbital of the atom. So there we have a lithium atom. Moving on to beryllium, atomic number four. We're going to put four protons in the center of that we're going to put four protons in the center of that nucleus and those four protons will be densely compacted into the nucleus making up the mass of the atom. The mass of the beryllium atom is nine so nine minus four gives us five neutrons so we'll go ahead and add in the five neutrons to compose this atom. So there's three, four, and one more, five. Notice as the atom gets heavier, the nucleus of the atom gets more and more dense. And now we're going to add those four electrons in the outer shell. So we're going to put two in the first, remembering that the first orbital level can only hold two electrons. And then we move outward to the second orbital where we add the next two electrons. So there we have a simplified version of the beryllium atom using Bohr's model. So we're going to go ahead and do a boron and a carbon. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to draw these on a separate sheet of paper and then I'm going to ask you to go ahead and build these atoms yourself on a piece of paper and then come back and check how you did. So go ahead and turn off the video now and we'll see you in a little bit. So welcome back and here we have both of those models completed. So let's talk about that boron atom and we have a five for an atomic number so there are five positive protons in the center of the nucleus and the atomic mass is 11 so 11 minus 5 gives us 6 neutrons, so we have 6 neutrons in the nucleus. And then 5 electrons, 2 in the first orbital and 3 in the second orbital. As we go to carbon, we're dealing with 6 as the atomic number and 6 for the neutron number, making the mass 12. So there are 6 protons and 6 neutrons in the nucleus, 2 electrons in the first orbital and 4 in the second orbital. Let's go ahead and jump over to fluorine and neon, numbers 9 and 10 on the periodic table. And getting their data from the periodic table, we're going to deal with atomic number 9 and atomic number 10. So go ahead and draw these on a separate sheet of paper, and then um, come back and check how you did. So go ahead and turn off the video now, and we'll see you a little bit. So welcome back, and here we have uh, the fluorine and the neon uh, models of Bohr's atoms. And uh, for fluorine, we're dealing with an atomic number of nine, so nine protons. I didn't put in all the circular protons, I just am putting a nine plus to represent those nine protons. And the mass is 19, making 10 neutrons, so the 10 zero represents the 10 neutrons and we have nine electrons. Now notice two in the first and seven in the second. And when we're filling that second orbital, we do balance out the electrons, one on each side, and then we come back and pair. And we usually pair top and around clockwise around the atom. So that's why you have all but the last electron on the left having pairs. Now when we get to neon, neon is a noble gas, and noble gases are the most stable of the elements on the periodic table, and what makes them stable is their outer 
shell is full. It's complete. So when we look at atomic number 10 and AMU of 20, we're dealing with 10 protons and 10 neutrons, thus the 10 plus and the 10 zero in the nucleus. And then when we put in the 10 electrons, we have two in the first orbital and eight in the second orbital, making that second orbital full, and that makes neon stable, having a full outer shell. And we'll talk about the significance of that later when we talk about how elements bond and the importance of those electrons in the outer shell. And when we compare neon to fluorine, fluorine's going to be looking for an extra electron to fill that outer shell, which is going to make it very attractive for bonding, while neon is already full and doesn't really want to look for any extra electrons. So bonding is not really something neon uh, looks to do. So hopefully this will help you in understanding the arrangements of electrons, protons, and neutrons in the atom. And we are using a model called the Bohr's model. Again, a simplified version of the atom, but can be helpful in many of the things we're going to look at uh, in atomic structure and bonding of the elements. So keep working on your chemistry.